important and no doubt a lot of stresses as uh, basically seen and uh, especially our students those are just thinking to get the degree or those are going to write the examination they are saying what will be the examination pattern whether examination will be online offline direct passing many many things are happening in their mind and although this four months they are almost locked in their houses they are not doing any social activities simply they are chatting watching and most of the time also i saw even the tv channels they are also showing the repeated telecast no new channel no new you know serials are coming so a lot of things are happening even the how much they will play in the house so it is a no doubt the depression is one and it is already seen a lot of societal cases has happened and that should not happen even though not this once they will come back to university system and then there will be a lot of pressure we teachers will try to fill all the things in the remaining period that is another crucial period for them and as well as for us so it is a very i think the time of the covid 19 has given the new dimensions to think new directions to move and nothing and the new to do for basically the humanity as well as com complete so this covid as always i say has changed our professional life it has changed our personal life and it has changed our social life all these three lives are changed in covid 19 era and we have to see wherever we are having the gaps we have to fill in the future once corona will be uh, basically the normalize or you can say minimize people are saying we have to now live with the corona we have to if it is so unless until we are having the medicine or the some vaccine some countries are claiming and it may come but no, no doubt till we have to already whatever the gaps were there that is another period unless until we are coming with this certain new ideas new things to do new new opportunity will be seen that will be better for our students staff and the faculty member so the stress management is not up for any earlier also when it was normal so industries were training their personnel workforces to relax the stress and one we all know that is the one is the yoga is another way in the indian system normally we promote and you know just it is 21st is going to be the yoga day uh, international yoga day which is basically the given by the india so uh, it is a yoga is one but no doubt apart from that that a lot of things which management people normally give the directions especially to skill people that how we, apart from those things how we can uh, reduce our stress and it is i can say it is no doubt in the covid it is more stress but certainly all the times we are stressed and i feel here the work pressure has also increased i believe even though i was working very easily but nowadays you can say from morning 9 o'clock to 7 o'clock i keep on working still i always find the work is not completed so the lot of stress sir i hope uh, you people will be giving something i'll be also listening i'll be online uh, and uh, this will be useful to my students just i i saw approximately 70 80 students have joined and that is a good that uh, at least management people should learn and they should tell to us as well and other uh, people so that we thank you very much and we since we are having the mu with the wisconsin green bay university so that is another we are doing and we are trying to have some collaborative work and that this is the one in that direction no doubt we wanted to send our students in this summer but it could not be materialized due to the gain covid but no doubt we are again connected each other so thank you varthi thank you other this uh, management team of my department and wisconsin green bay team for having this very useful webinar thank you thank you very much thank you so much sir thanks for providing also the flagship of uh, i e it's only because of you uh, we are able to have this logo on and uh, partnership of i e with us thank you so much sir thank you so much sir uh, for providing us time and uh, sharing your views on this particular topic uh, th uh, for me i just want to share that it is because of you and gaura sir uh, because gaura sir uh, is a uh, alumnus of this institute so thank you gaura sir and thank you uh, vc sir for this uh, now before moving further and inviting our next speaker uh, dr david and kui sir uh, i just want to, it is my opportunity or i can say it is my privilege to share uh, the bio of david sir 
uh, David N. Tui is a Frankenthal Professor of the Humanities, German and Global Studies at the University of Wisconsin, Green Bay. He is also the co-founder of the Center for Middle East Studies and the new Center of Civic Engagement. He received his MA and PhD from the University of Cincinnati in Germanic Language and Literatures. Since then, he has taught and lectured in the US, Spain, and the Czech Republic. Among his publications are two books on the Austrian writer and novel laureate Peter Hanke, as well as numerous articles on Orhan Pamuk, Navid Kirmani, and Zafar Onikak. Currently, he is co-editing a volume of essays on German Iraqi writer Abbas Khedar. So, David, sir, now stage is yours. Please, sir, join us and share your valuable views. Thank you very much. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, good. Yes, sir. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bharati, for uh, the invitation. It's an honor for me to be here, and it's also an honor for me to present with uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Gaurav Bansal uh, here in Wisconsin. So first, good morning from Wisconsin. I know it's evening there, so good evening to all of you. I wanted to share some of my thoughts evening, um, from my perspective as a faculty member here in the United States and um, as a professor, but also as a father of uh, two children. So my wife also teaches at the university. Um, with me, and we have two children, one who is in high school and another who's in his third year um, at the university. And we've all been teaching or learning online since um, March and have a somewhat small house. So it's been a little bit of a challenge for all of us. And I think um, for many of you or your students, this might be something that you can relate to um, as well. So one particular topic that's become very important and prominent in the United States and is a perfect match for this uh, webinar is the idea of mindfulness. And that is being aware of our present and being aware of ourselves and our reactions to our environment. And I think in this era of COVID, as we try to balance work and life, um, it's very, very important um, that we think about. So here in Wisconsin, we haven't been on a full quarantine like some other places uh, in Europe or even in New York in the United States. But still, it's been very difficult to get together with our colleagues or with our friends to relax and talk and have somewhat of a normal life. However, I think that these types of technologies, with Zoom and Skype, WebEx, and a number of things, have actually enabled us to um, have connections, like today for me to uh, speak to all of you, not only in India, but I see from all around the world. And for me personally, this has been very enlightening that I've had the opportunity to reconnect with friends who I have not heard from or seen in many, many years. I think there's a desire for people to reconnect or connect with people in, in different ways. And I think this is very important that we think about technology not only as a learning tool, but also as a way for us to connect personally with other people as we find ourselves isolated physically, but not so much isolated um, technologically um, throughout the world. Another thing that I think is very important and um, your uh, opening speaker mentioned this as well, is the importance of time management. Um, and this has been a challenge for me, for my wife, and um, for our children, because our homes have also become our working space. And um, as Dr. Singh mentioned, it's very easy to get up in the morning, start working, and continue working all the way to the end of the day, which is somewhat different than under normal times in pre-COVID where we could go to our office, we go to the university, we go to our workspace. And one of the things that has resulted, I think, I've noticed this, um, is that it's harder for many of our students to become motivated and to stay motivated in working. It's also difficult for me, I think, to um, maintain that same type of motivation because our workspace has become uh, part of our home space. And I think that it's very important that we try to find a way to manage our work, our home, and our family 
when this has all become collapsed in one space. Um, the other thing that I've noticed is that by working at home, by working with these types of technologies, in many cases, our work has actually increased. And I've noticed this from our children in school, high school, and at the university. So in March, I think around March 15th, we switched to entirely online or learning through Zoom. And a lot of teachers and a lot of professors, I think, began giving more work than they had before because they were very concerned about students not continuing to learn or they felt that they needed to provide information and help. And this became a problem that on the one hand, students as well as teachers are finding it difficult to maintain motivation. And on the other hand, they're finding an increased workload. And that workload can be seven days a week, that weekends no longer mean as much as the workday. So I think that it's very, very important that we find a way to divide our time. We set a particular time for work, we set a particular time for family, and we set a particular time for our own selves to rejuvenate and to break away from um, work. For this, I think, it's also become very important for me personally, and I hope for everyone, to appreciate nature and to find time to exercise. So you mentioned yoga. Um, something very important uh, in, in your culture. And I think for us here, um, my wife and I have tried to um, go for long walks every day. So around 5 p.m., we decide that it's time that we have to either stop or take a break from work, and we go on a long walk. And there's a, a park, a forest, not far from our house or along the river, um, and, and find a way in which we can move away from the space that we have for working to refresh ourselves, rejuvenate, and find time to think, um, I think, uh, as well. So it's important for sitting so long that we become physically active, but it also helps mentally that we're not constantly interacting just with the screen or a computer, but can also interact with the outdoors and um, nature. A fourth thing that I think is very important and that many people here have discovered is the importance to learn something new, to try to find a new hobby or to try to challenge ourselves and our minds with doing something new. It could be something very simple. When we first started um, working and learning from home, my children discovered baking and they started baking bread, they started baking desserts uh, and, and learning to cook, something that they did not do before. Um, it could also be um, learning a new language. I started practicing again um, learning Arabic through online um, programs. Uh, other people have learned uh, a musical instrument or a new hobby or a new game, something that keeps us challenged in our mind and continue learning when we don't have this interaction with other people and we don't have the normal types of activities that help um, keep us uh, sorry. And then finally, the last thing that I wanted to say and to um, conclude my uh, remarks here, something that's been very surprising for me, but very important. As you mentioned, I, I teach literature, I teach in the humanities. And one of the surprising things about uh, this COVID quarantine and pandemic has been the appearance of poetry. Um, when we first started um, with the staying at home and, and the quarantine, I suddenly received a number of emails from friends and colleagues all around the world who wanted to share poetry. They started poetry circles where everyone would um, send a poem to someone else in, in their list of contacts on email. Um, and then other people who I didn't know would share poetry uh, with me as well. One friend of mine who I've known for many, many years but have not seen for a long time has started her own poetry circle and every morning when I wake up, she shared a poem with me and, my, uh, and, and the other people in this group. And in the evening, she collects all of these poems and sends them out to everyone. Another colleague has started a Facebook page for people to write poetry and to, to write COVID and pandemic poetry, both to share their positive experiences as well as the challenges that they have in dealing with 
um, work, with the pandemic, with being isolated. And I think the power of words, the power of literature, the importance of art, of um, nature, and the beauty that we find in the world has to be part of um, everything that we do. It's been very encouraging, I think, to see that many museums that have closed around the world have begun putting their collections online so that we can still have this experience of aesthetic. A number of concerts halls have begun streaming live musical performances, concerts. Um, I've even watched several theatrical performances. As theaters have closed, um, they've shown performances of the past or they've had the actors performing live and sharing that then um, with people all around the world. So I think that there's very much a need for the arts, for music, for theater, but also um, for nature and for human And I think all of this will help us be more productive, but also to help us maintain and achieve a better mental health. So thank you very much for uh, inviting me and for letting me um, share some of my thoughts with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable uh, words and your ideas. Uh, definitely it's time to develop our inner skill and the skill we have left behind. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, now uh, we are going to move further to our next speaker that is Dr. Gaurav Bansal, sir. I request you, sir, to please start sharing your screen. Meanwhile, I am going to uh, provide a brief introduction of Gaurav Bansal, sir. Uh, Dr. Gaurav Bansal is a uh, Frederick E. Bayer Professor in Business and full professor of MIS Statistics at the Austin E. Coffrin uh, School of Business at University of Wisconsin Greenway. He earned his PhD in Management Information System from University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee in 2008 and his MBA from Kent State University, OYO in 2002. He completed his bachelor, de bachelor degree in Mechanical Engineering from Madan Mohan Malia University in 1996. Dr. Bunsell has published in several uh, premier MIS journals in Scopus and Scopus. His research has won several, several national and international levels uh, awards. And his paper nominated and won for the uh, best paper many times since 2008 to 2019. Currently, he served as senior editor SE for Journal of Information Technology Case and Application Research and as Associate Editor for Journal of Midwest AIS. Dr. Bunsell is honored to have won prestigious fellowship and awards worldwide. So I request Dr. Gaurav Bansal, sir, please proceed yeah. further. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bharti, uh, for allowing me uh, to invite, uh, for inviting me for this panel. Uh, can you see my screen here, please? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Okay, okay, good. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. So let me, what is this? Yeah. Well, thank you, David, and uh, thank you all the panelists and uh, Dr. S. N. Singh, sir, Vice Chancellor, Honorable Vice Chancellor. I'm uh, really uh, very glad and uh, also very thankful that you invited me for this panel. And I think it's very interesting and also very, very, very timely to talk about these things. So I put together uh, some slides, uh, kind of a, a think of as my way of expressing my ideas of what I think, what is what are like possible reasons, what can we do, and what can we do as individual and what we should be doing as a society to address these issues. And I agree with Dr. David, you know, or David Corian, many of the things he mentioned about mindfulness and about hobby, uh, I started learning tabla, you know, I had a huge desire to learn tabla for last 15, 16 years, but never got time to, to learn any musical instrument. But this COVID situation actually helped me to, to unwind myself and, you know, spend my time in the evening to learn the musical instrument. Uh, Dr. David talked about uh, how technology can connect, but I will talk about how to disconnect with technology. Okay, so let me, okay, so I'll move. 
I, I want to hear something from you in the middle so I can be sure that I am talking through, right? So please say yes or no something in the middle, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, thank sir. you. So my uh, something, what's happening here? So about myself, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as Bharti introduced me, thank you Bharti for introduction. So I did my mechanical engineering from MM, MUT in 96, then I worked for Daewoo Motors uh, for two years to 98 and GM in, from 98 to 2000. Then I came to US and did my MBA. Actually, I, I, I got married in 99, just before my MBA. So life happens, so I got married and my MBA, so my daughter was born uh, after the MBA program and my son was born in the PhD program. And you can see that between 2002 and 2004, uh, there was September 11, which happened. Uh, but, you know, like life happens. And so we just simply move on, right? And then I got a job at University of Wisconsin Green Bay since 2008. So I, I mentioned this, uh, like September 11 effect, because that's something we can't control. But we have to move on, right? So let me talk about stress management, uh, like my agenda for this presentation. So first thing I want to stress is do what you love and love what you do. People ask me all the time that what should, what should I do major in? What should be my major area, emphasis area, or like PhD topic, you know, something like that. What, what advice do you have? So I say do what you love and love what you do. So let's talk about business cycle. Second thing I will talk about is a dark side of IT. Uh, how to disconnect. So David talked about how IT is helping us to connect. Uh, but I will talk, uh, take a little twist, different twist, how we need to disconnect in order to connect. Third thing I will talk about, restricted definition of growth, that financial growth is not the only growth that matters. So a lot of us get stressed out because we think that growth can only happen if we are making more money or we are growing financially, whether it is a company, it is the economy. You talk about country like US, India, Japan, whatever, they talk about GDP, like as if everything is defined in terms of money and economy, uh, in terms of financial dollars. But I'm saying that financial growth is not the only growth that matters. And last thing is, how does this all come together? How do we you know, uh, combine all this and understand it as a holistic? So first thing is do what you love and love what you do. So this is like business cycles, you know? So there was a recession in 2000, you know, there was like a dot-com burst. I don't know if you heard about that. In the, you know, like uh, e-commerce company, there were a lot of e-commerce companies coming up since to, uh, up until 2000, and then there was a big recession. And then there was another big recession in 2007, 2008 area. And, and guess what? I did my MBA in 2002, which was just around that recession, and got my PhD in 2007, 2008 area, uh, year, which was another recession. So you don't plan to do, you know, I mean, so my advice is, you don't plan according to what is hot in the market right now. Like is, is like finance is the hot area, or like marketing is the hot area, or a strategy, or uh, HR or like, you know, mechanical or computer science, do what you love, you know, because otherwise when you graduate, you don't know what the new market will be like. So my second side is dark side of IT. So we know that IT is very helpful. It is helping us connect people from all over the world, helping us to share. Uh, Facebook is good, laptop, uh, email connectivity, everything is nice, helping us to work from wherever we are, from home. But where are we going? So if you look at the evolution of man, we started kind of when we were not able to walk straight, and we are back again where we are not able to walk straight, right? Can you see this? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Okay. And then I have some pictures here that how is IT impacting? It is basically invading our bedrooms, our family rooms. Germany is have even installed those red, you know, those like signal lights on the street because they know that people don't look up while they're walking. So they put those signal lights on the street itself so that people can see it's red or green. And even though friends are connected, but they are not connected. So we always try to connect with somebody who is not nearby and we disconnect with people who are nearby. So it is important to connect to those who, who are near to us as, as well as we, all, as, as we try to connect to people who are far from us. And all these mobile companies, you know, they want our undivided attention. So when you feel like, when you look at Facebook, you say like, love, haha, wow, sad, angry. Who makes money? All the time we do all these things. Basically, Facebook loves all these emotions. Whether we are sad, we are angry, we are wow, we are haha, we are love, or we like. 
Facebook is always loving all this because when the, when we uh, when we attend to Facebook, when we like log on and we check our Facebook hundred times a day or WhatsApp or whatever, they make money with our attention. They get data and uh, they get our attention. So we need to understand that who is actually loving all this. So when we are angry or sad or wow, Facebook is always loving all this because they love our reactions and because we think that our reactions give us a dopamine like some kind of a dopamine effect in our mind when we get a high effect, same effect we get when somebody likes our post. And so that dopamine, Facebook understand how to keep giving us that, that dopamine. So we keep coming back to Facebook and social media websites. Forbes is acknowledging, how can I turn this off? Let me see if I can move this around so it does not take my screen. So Forbes, the article recently, you know, um, that how this like COVID situation is basically causing stress for people working from home. So companies think that you are working from home, we have all the time, but actually that approach has given people more stress because now they have to work all the time. The work never stops. So now I go to my third point, which is restricted definition of growth. So my argument is that, and I think I'm not the only one who argues this, there are like other authors who have written books now on this topic. Financial growth is not the only growth known to humankind. So learning first, you know, capitalism. So as we, you know, embrace capitalism, it only focuses on one definition of growth, that is economic growth. But in India, you know, I remember from Vedic society as I would learn and read and see around, that our foundation was led on learning first, capital second. So when we talk about Brahmin was like number one in, in the caste system and Vaishnav was number two in the caste system. I think the main idea was that like learning was first and, and capital was second. But capitalism does the, uh, it basically flips them. So capitalism puts, let me go back. So capitalism, that's my last point. I don't know if you can see it. Capitalism yes, puts the capital first and everything else second. So do you see this like disconnect? So like all throughout our Vedic ages, learning I think was first because then eventually it, uh, it, uh, it became caste system. But before caste system came, I think it was learning. The idea was that learning is our sole motivation of our life. So if we focus on, on learning as the growth and not capital as the growth, then there is no limit. Because if you focus on capital as the growth, then there is a limit. The oil is limited, the trees are limited, the air, uh, uh, oxygen, carbon, you know, water, everything is limited. But if you focus on, on learning, then the growth can be infinite. The growth has no end. And this was the main focus which basically inspired me to go for a PhD uh, and I had the gap of two years. So I was thinking that, you know, growth does not have to be financial growth. So even if I don't have a job, I don't make money. But if I learn, if I, that also means that I am intellectually growing myself. And I think that perspective helped me to keep going. Otherwise, I could have, you know, I was not very happy with what was happening around me. Uh, companies in India were not hiring me because this, they thought I have MBA from US, so I am very ambitious and I will leave once the economy turns around. And so the small companies will not hire me because they can't afford me, they thought. Big companies will not hire me because they, they only hire from campuses. And I was out of campus by that time. So it was a very difficult situation for me. But, but the focus on learning that, that the growth does not happen only financially, it can also happen in terms of intellectual growth, that kept me going. Then next thing I want to talk about is, how does it all come together? So this is my conceptual model. I try to put together how this all comes together. So I talk about three factors, cultural factors. In India, you know, and also outside India too, we have this feeling that work is worship. So we, we have a tendency to work hard because we approach work as work as workship. Then I talk about the IT factors, that what are the inherent characteristics of IT. And then personal factors, because we have a brain which is, has a cognitive processing, just like a computer. But every brain, you know, at some point, it, it reaches a threshold. Uh, if you keep giving information, it gets information overload. So let's first talk about culture, uh, cultural factors. So we have personal aspirations, right? Because we all want to grow. And that's basically called masculinity by Hofstede, that we have personal aspirations. The employees want to grow. But the employers have aspirations too. They know that we want to grow. And they keep giving us more work. 
Are you with me? Yes, sir. So, so basically, personally, we, we want to work hard because we want to grow. But the employers, you know, they understand that we want to grow. So they, so they, in fact, want us to work even more harder than we can. Then the IT factors. What are the IT factors? Basically, this IT itself, you know, the work never stops 24-7. There is no end. You can always go to your email. You know, you, they're always, it's never ending. WhatsApp, messages, social media, news feed. There's always, there's always breaking news. I mean, that is surprising to me that how can there be breaking news every moment? Social media manipulation. So as I was saying, how does Facebook gets money? Because they, get, they want our undivided attention. More attention they get from us, they get more data on us. And more data means more money for them. And fake news help us to get more attention because we will not like something which is normal. People like and react and share and feel angry and uh, excited and love when they see something extreme, right? So, so Facebook has an inherent, when I say Facebook, I mean social media companies in general, they have an inherent desire to, to spread something which is exciting. And that is oftentimes not the real news. And then obviously because of this AI and like robotics going on, we have reskilling pressures. We have to learn and unlearn very fast. Like new languages keep coming in, new IT tools keep coming in. So this is the nature of IT. And then my third thing is personal factors. So we have addiction because we have dopamine, you know, in our brain we get a high, like when we drink, like, uh, and when we get something good, we get a reward, we get a dopamine release in our brain. That leads to addiction. And I call that as individualism because that's our individual, ex, you know, high we get. And then there is our bounded rationality of information overload. We're just trying to catch up with the infinity, right? There's so much to catch up. Like as Dr. Singh said, the work never stops. Uh, you, he feels that he is spending so many hours on the computer, but it's still, it's still like work is never ending. And same with news, you know, if you start watching news, even though there is no news as such, but they keep repeating same thing as if, as if it is keep on going forever. So now with all these three things, what can we do? So my answer is, as Dr. David also said, mindfulness. Because when we become mindful of our surroundings and hey man, where are we going you know, in all this race? What is, what is that which actually matters? Then we, that, that will give us a purpose in life. So I just wrote a paper, you know, it is uh, accepted for, the public, uh, for, for presentation at America's conference on information system to be held virtually in August 2020. Something real about fake news. And I talk about uh, something called social media mindfulness. So this is a very interesting paper, you know, and it's with my colleague here at University of Wisconsin, Green Bay, Aaron. And we just submitted this paper uh, in a journal public, uh, for journal publication. Let's see how it goes. And I have a recommendation here on this. I had this book for a long time, but never read this. But I finished reading this book a few months ago. It's available in India for free, zero rupees in Kindle. And for in US, it's 10, 1077. It's not something new we, we, we don't know. But the idea is that this is very important. I mean, this is the only way out from this, you know, all this crap. So as the, David said, talk about hobby, you know, hobby is important learning something new so the focus is on basically learning uh, if you keep learning developing new skills writing poetry and there's a big big research on this you know i'm so i'm not the only one saying this i just went to google scholar uh, google scholar gives you and i, I just typed uh, like mindfulness and i got a bunch of papers you know and they have been cited 2000 times 1100 times 1000 times so this is an important area to work on and to think and to practice. Uh, well, so I stop here at this point. So let me stop sharing and see if you, where I am. How do I stop sharing? I stop sharing. So that was my, my thoughts on this. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable presentation and the recommendation you get definitely will help us. Uh, <clears throat> There is uh, one, uh, another uh, speaker, he is not able to connect us because of some reason. So I am switching to our next speaker, Dr. Sudhir Narayan Singh. He is an associate professor and head uh, of Humanities and Management Science Department, Triple M UT Gorakhpur. Sir is...
bilingual poet, editor, critic, and short story writer, started his career by teaching English to visually challenged students. Later on, Dr. Singh rendered services at various colleges and institute of UP, Haryana, and Punjab as English faculty and ELT trainer. Presently, he is serving as associate professor and head. of humanities and management science department besides these sir has many publications and sir has authored two book also uh, that is formal letters and feminine conciseness uh, glim glimpsing india's perspective and sir author, uh, authored uh, lectured uh, in many uh, renowned institute now sir i welcome you for your valuable speech sir please continue Sudhir so sir, Gora sir, you are host now. So I. Oh, I'm the host. Have... Okay. Yeah. So what do I do? <laughs> sir, unmute Dr. Sudhir Narayan Singh, sir. Okay, Sudhir so Narayan Singh. Where do I find him, Sudhir Narayan Singh? Let me. Uh, can I make you the host now? Yes, sir. Please. Okay, let me find you in the Bharati. Sir, sir, sir make Sanjay Mishra sir host. He is actually okay, author of Sanjay this. Okay, Sanjay Mishra. Um, okay, I'll do that. Right, just give me one second. Let me find you, Sanjay. I'll just unmute all. Right? No, no, not all. Hold on, because there are so many people. Right, I need to sir, find. It will make chaos actually. Yeah. Hold on, just give me one second. Yes, sir. Sanjay Mishra, okay. I let me make the uh, make. Okay, now Sanjay is the host. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, right now I am host. Wait for a second. Yes, sir. Please. Uh, sir if sir, abhijit sir is with sir. you please join him otherwise okay please unmute sudhir sir hello abhijit sir has not requested yet sir he has requested okay sir no you sir. you can ask him to uh, sure sure request. sure sure okay sir okay we, we are waiting to listen you sir hello am i audible yes sir so i i am so happy to listen to my two prior stalwarts all from the university of wisconsin and uh, green bay our honorable vice chancellor sir also deliberated upon this topic minding our minds stress management during covid covid 19 era the first resource person from wisconsin university deliberated upon how to connect second one on how to disconnect from the technology my take on will be this distance and i would like to talk on distance and touch i would also request the host to kindly allow me to share my screen yes sir please host this it is showing that disable uh, attend attendee screen sharing kindly allow me to share my screen even if i am unable to share i would like to focus on on two three points what is the distance that is advisable and what is social distancing a lot many people have spoken on this but my four points indicators will be that proximix principle says that distance distinguishes and decipheres meaning there are four indicators of proximix and the first one is intimate zone that remains from 
physical context to 1.5 feet and the second one is personal zone distance limit is from 1.5 feet to 4 feet social zone from 4 feet to 12 feet and public zone 12 feet to range of sight and hearing here my take on that is why the problem is there we need to be the requirement is that we need to be mindful of these distances and these zones but the problem that comes to us emotional problem that are we mentally ready to be distanced from everybody socially human touch talks millions of the meaning it carries a huge meaning inside it and that way it is it cannot be compromised when we talk of these things these distancing how come the cases of suicides are surfacing present day world and how people those are uh, directed to be quarantined they what is their emotional balance or imbalance what causes that in my opinion this lack of touch lack of and this social distancing sometime makes them feel that they are unattended they are uncared and they had to manage themselves for these days in india life is like that most of the people like middle class and her middle class they depend on the other classes serving class for functioning their day to day routine function maid and etc are you can say uncompromising needs for them and then what to touch what not to touch whom to touch all that question surfacing now and it is covid is such a kind of disease pandemic that we never know the person whom we are talking to and looking perfectly healthy today tomorrow he is maybe a corona positive case he may be declared so that and we both the country india the largest democracy on this earth with a very dense population and america the strongest democracy on this earth probably both these countries are the biggest sufferers of this pandemic their our way of greetings our emotional requirement and all that require somewhere to be mixed our we feel happy when we are mixed up with friends we feel happy when we are mixed up with our colleagues we feel happy when we are mixed up with our family member and family structure in india is like that that everybody in the villages where joint family structure is there their relationship is like that that everybody feels clubbed together and they feel happy only when they are close to each other so all these things and they are suddenly this medical emergency comes up with the great cause of social distancing and somewhere emotional equilibrium is flawed disturbed mal adjusted and problems are surfacing everywhere people are feeling uh, getting panicked insecure 
an imbalance in that environment the expert opinion that came from david corey who said that how does he try to make balance of time management and uh, <coughs> managing lives but that is wonderful and the suggestion of all that <coughs> even though i would like to share with gaurav bansal sir our partner in this international webinar sir you said that while clicking like love haha who is earning or who is making money by our each click and by the time we are viewing ourselves on social media definitely but the bigger problem is that the person who is quarantined or the person who is uh, segregated from the social group he has no option whether facebook is earning or youtube is earning or even whatsapp is earning this is the only option available for him <coughs> once he is segregated and distant from the family that kind of emotional distancing and lack of personal touch is really a great challenge surfacing people and causing them emotionally insecure and imbalance and that's why it sometimes when it when that emotional overflow is more and more powerful it surfaces the desire to leave and probably this is the reason suicidal tendency and suicidal cases are increasing day by day but managing stress for managing stress we have no other option except we need to go for alternates available with us and those alternatives are definitely music and sometime indoor sport sports like sports on video games and etc etc and this is definitely going to be the high time for others to earn but for uh, for humans to learn and this generation the kind of pandemic we are facing we can say that our our fathers at least they have never faced it in their lifetime and the kind of losses to life and losses to emotional balance is very challenging for us that is my take away and these are my these are the challenges these are the points i wish to highlight from this forum and i hope that my next speaker is a psychology professor and he will be better resource person to suggest some remedy of such problems that we are facing am i right over to you bharti thank you all for participating webinar and thank you my partners university of wisconsin to be with us thank you to our resource person that's it from my side thank you thank you so much sir thank you so much for your valuable views uh <coughs> we have our speaker uh but now is uh dr Rab my opportunity to uh, dr Rab he is assistant professor in science that is our department dr mishra earned his ma and phd in psychology from university of delhi prior to joining triple m ut dr mishra taught at ramanujam college university of delhi Dr. Mishra has specialization in cultural psychology, health psychology, <coughs> and psychology of self, and international publication to his credit. Now it's over to you, sir. Please share your views to us. Thanks, Dr. Bharti. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. So thank you very much, Bharti, for this nice introduction. 
Honorable Vice Chancellor of MMUT, Professor Ethan Singh, sir, Professor David Khoury, Professor Garo Bansal, Head of Humanities and Management Science Department, Dr. Sudhir Narayan, sir, my fellow colleagues and dear students. It is a privilege and honor for me to be a part of a panel of eminent scholars from various domains and to share my thoughts. Fellow panelists, uh, I couldn't uh, connect earlier because of some technical problems. So I was not able to uh, listen to the eminent speakers uh, earlier, but I believe that uh, they might have meaningfully contributed to this webinar and covered much about the current situation and how it is affecting our lives. Uh, I would just like to quickly highlight some things that are coming to my mind right now. Uh, in psychology, we have a very famous theory called the transactional theory of stress and coping. It was given by two famous psychologists, Lazarus and Folkman. Uh, I'm not going to into the details of the theory of what they said, but I'll discuss the essence of it. The focal idea of this theory is that stress is much about our appraisal of events. That is our perception or evaluation of what is happening around us. And that means it implies that the way we evaluate the circumstances, situations around us has important effects on the way we react to them and our efforts to cope up with them. Lazarus says that whether or not a stressor, that is a factor that creates stress, is experienced discomforting, it depends on our evaluation or perception of our capabilities, skills, abilities, constraints, resources, etc. So, in short, the intensity of our stress, it depends on two factors. One is our perception or interpretation of anything around us as threatening or harmful. And the second important thing is what resources, whether it's physical resource, psychological resources, social resources that are available to us to cope up with that threat. I do not say that there's nothing which is inherently painful or threatening. There are definitely things, situations, which are threatening in their nature. But like the current situation, the current COVID-19 situation, yes, it's a big threat. Uh, it's, it's, it's a disease and uh, uh, governments across the world, they are trying to cope up with how to control the cases, etc. Yes, but Apart from this COVID-19 situation, in our regular routine lives, majority of the times, majority of the cases, we either evaluate something as very threatening, even when it is not, or underestimate our coping resources, which leads to stress. So the lesson is to take a balanced view of stressful situations. Uh, and when I suggest taking a balanced view, I am not suggesting to be blindly positive, no. What I'm saying is simply to remain cautious, not to exclusively focus on the darker side of anything. It is the balanced appraisal of situation that helps us to choose the most suitable way to deal with stress. So coming to the COVID-19 situation, yes, it is a big threat. We are trying, uh, we, we are definitely doing certain things to prevent it, to uh, avoid it and to cure it or uh, it's not like uh, uh, there, there have been more difficult challenges in the world history there have been more difficult challenges to the humanity in the world history but I believe I personally believe that the desire to live the desire to thrive is the strongest is stronger than any such situation so the only thing is Key, we do not have to, we do not have to uh, say, uh, give up. We have to uh, say, you can say, we can keep fighting. We just say, uh, we, we are calling people who are working, who are helping us with the COVID situation, Corona fighters. So yes, they are fighting for us, but we also have to fight with this situation. It's not that this is a situation where we can just, uh, give up and let things happen the way they are happening. We have to fight. We have to fight back. That is important. So if we think that everything is, we have lost everything, things are 
out of control, then definitely it will be a stressful situation. But we should we we need to keep believing that we are at a stage we are at a at a civil as a civilization we are at a stage where we can find ways to uh, uh, come out of this problem to uh, to get help to the people who are suffering from it. So it's it uh, what uh, my suggestion is yes it's a difficult situation but the uh, silver lining is that there have been more difficult situations in the past and we have developed we have come up to this situation to up to here so i do not see that this is going yes it is going to the, the only thing is that we have now to change the way we were living now the, the most important lesson of covid 19 is that we cannot live the way we used to live we have to change our ways we have to mend our ways that's mm -hmm. one thing now coming to stress again, another thing which you all must have noticed is that there are people who happen to be more stressed than the rest of the others in the same situations. That means there is something in ourselves, something in our personalities, which determines the level of stress we experience and the ways to respond to it. Uh, there is a whole range of personality factors and it is difficult to uh, uh, discuss all of them, but I'll try to discuss a few of them. Uh, there are numerous studies uh, which report that people who are open to new experiences, they feel less stressed than others. That is, openness to new experiences, it's, it's an important factor which determines how much stress, to what degree your stress will be intense. Openness to new experiences, it emanates from the flexibility in the thought process. And it is this flexibility which helps us in reappraisal of the situation. So the point is sometimes when things are not that threatening, like if I take the example of COVID-19, people are getting uh, all sorts of wrong information from social media and they are discussing and they are threatening other people who do not have access to the correct information. So what is this? This is all wrong appraisal. We do not have the correct information and we are, we are understanding something else while the problem is something else. So when you are open to change, when you are, you, are, you are flexible, you are flexible in your thought process, it helps you to look at the problem, any problem in your life in different ways. And if you have the ability to think about a problem in different ways, it will definitely help you to feel better or uh, say uh, uh, it will tell you about some uh, you can say the positive side of something or you can it, it can help you to find out a way of another way perspective of dealing with the problem so that is one thing openness to new experience then there is another personality factor that is called resilience resilience i i say it is the ability to adapt to change oneself and to bounce back from difficulties Studies, numerous studies prove that resilience works as a protective factor against stress. Resilient people tend to view life's difficulties as challenges and respond with actions rather than with fear, self-pity, or victim mentality. So resilience is another important factor which helps you to bounce back from difficult situations it's and resilience comes from emotional awareness it is very important for us to understand what we are feeling and why we are feeling so it has been seen that people who are high on resilience are aware that while they cannot control the circumstances they can definitely control their response to such situations so the second point the first i talked about the appraisal of events how to take the balanced view of any difficult situation. The second thing, important thing, which I am talking about right now, is that there is something in us, our personal qualities, which are helpful in stressful situations. And it is not that we are born with these qualities. We can develop these qualities. We can learn. We have an ability. We can learn things. So these personal qualities, and I told you that there is a whole range of personal personality attributes or personal qualities which act as buffer against stress. And I told you that it's difficult to cover up them, all of them. In fact, there is a whole new branch of psychology, which is called positive psychology, 
and which deals with the positive side of human nature. There are a whole range of things if we cultivate in ourselves, we, if we cultivate positive outlook, if we try to take a balanced view, if we have resilience, if we have the flexibility in our thinking, we can definitely uh, say, uh, feel less stressed than other people. And that will help you to find out a better way that will help you to find out the, the uh, uh, say, the ways to handle the situation, to find out solution to the problems. What happens is whenever we are too much stressed, we are overwhelmed by the emotions, our, our, our own emotions, and uh, we, do not, we are not able to find out a good way of coming out of that situation. And when you take a balanced approach, when you have certain, these certain qualities, it helps you to remain calm. These qualities, they help you to look at the problem from different perspectives and try to find out a solution rather than focusing on the problem itself. So that is all. Positive psychology is, uh, 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 there is a huge amount of research which is being done in positive psychology, right? Like uh, uh, in my PhD thesis itself, uh, one of the conclusions of my PhD uh, results was that oh, the quality called hope, which we call in Hindi, mein kehte hai, it is uh, Asha. Uh, it is quite important in predicting the health of an individual. People who are, uh, in short, in general, in very simple terms, I can say that people who are hopeful, they are healthier than people who are less hopeful. And even if they fall ill, even if they uh, get some disease, people who are hopeful, they tend to have better recovery rates than people who are less hopeful. So there are, there are many positive things in our lives and we need to focus on those positive things uh, definitely while being also looking at the negative sides of things. So uh, that is about being positive. One more thing which uh, which is coming to my mind right now uh, when I'm talking about stress is time management. Uh, COVID-19 situation, uh, we there was a nationwide lockdown for around 40, 50 days and we had huge amount of time giving, uh, you know, and uh, offices were shut, everything was, and we had huge amount of time. And what happens is time is an important resource. And the problem is it is limited. It cannot be created. It comes and it goes. If, if we use it, it's good. If we waste it, it's our problem. And particularly in the age of social media and internet, it has become even more precious. We are spending huge amount of time. There are researches that people are spending uh, two hours on television, three hours on Facebook and social media. So in the age of social media and internet, time is uh, has become even more precious. And in our daily lives, coming to daily lives, most of the times when we encounter stress, it is because of poor time management. We often fail in time management because of lack of planning. We do not plan and hence end up wasting time. So uh, time management is very important. Uh, whenever I teach in the class students, whenever I come to this topic of stress management, uh, Def, uh, many students, they ask me, sir, we are not able to uh, manage time. Uh, we, exam ka stress both hai, sir. What do we do? How to deal with exam stress? And the only thing which comes to my mind at that point of time is that they do not plan their time. So planning, and and it's not a big deal. It's not a very difficult thing which we cannot do. It's just a matter of habit. If we cultivate a habit, then we'll definitely be able to do it. So uh, there are a few quick things which I can suggest for time management. Uh, like the first thing is uh, we we need to make a daily list of activities to be undertaken. We can call it a to-do list. So what we can do, what what I'm supposed to, what I should be doing this, what, what, what I'm going to do today. So prepare a daily list of activities. And another thing important while preparing this list is to prioritize what is more important should come first, what is less important should come later. And then scheduling it. And uh, when you are scheduling the uh, daily activities, what you can do is 
uh, you can uh, schedule the most demanding part, most demanding, demanding jobs at a time when you think you are most alert and productive and you can keep the easier things for later things. And another important thing about time management is always setting up deadlines. Deadlines are important because if we do not uh, keep deadlines, uh, 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 we end up with many unfinished tasks. And unfinished tasks, they, they, are, they, they have uh, important implications for stress. Kaibar, many times we feel stress because we have so many uh, unfinished tasks to do and we, we are not sure how to cope up with all these unfinished tasks, how to start about these tasks. So setting up deadlines is important. Uh, and another thing which is which often people miss is that uh, taking a few quick breaks is also a good idea when you are uh, working on your schedule. Uh, when you, whenever you are working in, in your daily routine, when you are engrossed with certain activities, taking a few quick breaks will help you to rejuvenate. So time management is another important thing which came to my mind when, when we talk about stress. And then another important thing, which is, uh, again, we are uh, lacking these days is physical activity. Physical activities in our lives that has reduced to a large extent. Uh, the kind of lifestyle which we are uh, uh, leading these days, it does not leave time or we do not spare time for physical activities. But the medicine uh, people, medical practitioners nowadays recommend at least 45 minutes of regular physical activity, particularly non-competitive physical exercises such as aerobics, walking, jogging, swimming, cycling, etc. They help to deal with excessive levels of stress. And what happens is that the physical activities, they increase something called heart capacity. There's something called at rest heart rate. <coughs> that is the amount of effort your heart, your, your heart takes to pump blood in your cap capillaries and the lower at he rest heart rate is heart rate is the healthier you are and physical activities at least 45 minutes of regular physical activity it lowers at rest heart rate there are numerous studies which now prove that physical ex exercises are very good way to uh, de-stress and they not only uh, they de-stress, they also slow down the physical and mental effects of aging as well. Then there are certain relaxation, relaxation techniques such as meditation, yoga, hypnosis, and biofeedback also, which help the individual to reach a state of deep physical relaxation in which the person feels somewhat detached from the immediate environment. And the studies report that relaxation, relaxation techniques they bring significant changes in the heart rate, blood pressure, and other physiological factors. So, uh, in short, very briefly, I would sum up what I uh, what came to my mind, mind while I was discussing stress is uh, we need to we need to look at situations from different angles. Whenever we feel stress, we need to look from we try to we should try to look from different angles because. Sometimes thinking, just uh, reappraising, reevaluating a situation, we feel better, or we get a new perspective of the problem, and that new perspective leads to a better approach to handle it. The second thing uh, uh, is developing certain personal qualities, looking at the positive side of human existence, and developing that, cultivating those personal qualities. They they are they are basically protective layers. They help you to feel less stress. The third is obviously time management in our daily lives. Uh, if we manage our time well, it would be, uh, there will be less incidences when you feel stressed out with something. And then obviously physical competitive, uh, non-competitive exercises or relaxation techniques. They are a good way of dealing with stress in our daily lives. And apart from that, the, there are certain other things like spending more time with people, with people around us and discussing about certain good things, it, it, it also helps you to deal with stress. So uh, I would not take much time. Uh, I'll sum up my discussion here. And thanks 
to all the organizers for giving me an opportunity to share my views and thanks to all the participants for a patient listening thank you thank you dr bhati thank you so much sir thank you so much uh, abhijit sir for your valuable words now i would like to request uh, dr jha from assam he want to share his views uh, to you gaurav sir please dr okay. jha you are not uh, you can share your views okay good evening can you listen me yes, yes sir yes audible sir uh thank you thank you very much sir and i am really privileged and honored to be the part of this webinar well very exciting uh lecture was and uh, one line that you had quoted it was really a fantastic do what you love love what you do question is that i am practically the central a center in charge in the quarantine center here in lakhimpur district day before yesterday one of the members who was quarantined there broke the hostel and went away the police said i won't catch him i shall shoot him i said the passengers are local people they are not the enemies let me deal with that i would like to share i asked him my dear friend what happened he said i did not have the dinner i said okay i shall provide you the government is providing you it is taking late then after he agreed with me the question what you said about or the issues that you said about uh, india uh, and indian cultural heritage sir why don't you become the ambassador in america on behalf of india indian cultural system what you are proposing about yoga and other things well we are very uh, proud of being an indian that uh, we have such a rich heritage so in that direction you can do some work and we can have the privilege to have the some pride on that so this is one and second thing uh, i still remember about uh, uh, the stress management i would like to share my views you people might have the experience long back maybe the 30 years ago when telegram comes particularly in the rural setting many of the people have started crying because the words are limited to express there it was generally telegrams comes in respect of this mother serious come soon that communication was designated particularly practically not uh, symbolically but practically it is what designated some bad news quite similarly in quarantine center when the pass passengers are quarantined they think they are the patient of covid 19 and they are going to meet the death so in that particular situation i would like to share what i am doing here with the passengers this is nothing boost up yourself boost up yourself and be powerful psychologically medicine will work and i don't agree i don't think what is happening one term laws i don't have the particular knowledge and that is why i would like to uh, place the thing social distancing why can't it be individual distancing social distancing men of sociology might define it we are the social animal social distancing uh, i don't think that uh, it might have the some philosophy and definition on that so in uh, i would like to listen something by any of the participants why not in place of social distancing it should have been used individual distancing thank you thank you thank you very much sir Uh, sir i wish to uh, uh, congratulate you for eagerly volunteering this panel and to be with us for sharing your opinion at the same time i also second your opinion that you said individual distancing 
why is it so this sense uh, itself is something that causes pain in the heart and it it creates a pain when the term is individual distancing used then it feels that i am distancing for my safety and it is for my care and all that so the whole perspective is changed so thanks for coining better term in terms of individual psychological well being uh, that is more suitable and it goes well in the line of minding our minds in stress management because somebody is uh, when we are using the term repeatedly social distancing it means that we are being or the person who is going to be quarantined is being distanced away from the right 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 because of that the person is the kind of isolation and it's a kind of a painful sense of untouchability that that right will pass me now i am socially outcast sort of right right i am distant from the society so right that problem is there and that makes us emotionally imbalanced insecure and overall depressed so that that idea is very good thanks for calling me okay thank Any you any question dr bharti is there okay one so anyone else who has some the uh, something want to ask or share to sir please chat us chat box is open okay dr ja no i would like to congratulate you for the work you are doing really appreciate it i think you are doing a very responsible job and we are very proud of you thank you sir thank you sir sir i want to say ja ji I yes sir one thing to you that people uh, like sometimes they have a very small guest entry in a movie but they steal the show that <laughs> with <in> our heart <laughs> right sir <laughs> thank you sir thank you okay sir uh, there is no question at all uh, in chat box i If think the session is very much clear you can uh, share it to you can ask uh, for queries we still have 2 3 minute time we can take exactly. up some questions exactly sir i mentioned it earlier that anyone have any query or uh, something want to ask our speaker they can chat us and we will share the in the chat box i can see sir i <laughs> want to ask that what process for uh, what process of autogenic training in stress management this there is a question by shreya gupta anybody would like to answer autogenic training yes any panelists would like to deliberate upon this Well, can I jump in? Yes, please. I think uh, there are like lot of different names given to lot of lot of things, but the basic idea is that what Dr. Abhijit mentioned about uh, uh, being or being open to new ideas, and what Dr. David said about mindfulness, and I also talked about mindfulness. If you think about it, basically mindfulness is also about open to new. To uh, is also about being open to new perspectives, because when you are not mindful, you become just constrained into one thought. and that's what i discussed in my paper on polarization and that's what you see in our societies in us and india that when you just get one type of friends one type of news one type of perspective you become constrained and you are not open anymore so when you become open minded and uh, when you become open minded that then you get multiple perspectives and you become mindful that helps you to become open minded and open minded helps you become more more mindful i think they go both ways so i think the idea, and that also helps you kind of relax because all this fake news you know if you think about social media the way they kind of constraining you so i know that people are in like quarantine and they connect on social media but when you are on social media you just connect to your own friends and they have same perspective 
So you only get one perspective. There is no openness anymore. So, so when you are, so we have to be basically, you know, be aware of openness. I like the idea of Dr. B. G. Mishra saying openness and how he connects openness. But I think they all come together. Same way this autogenic, you know, I'm pretty sure it's all about relaxation and uh, de-stressing. So if you are open kind of learning, then your focus goes away from your personal growth. I think that's very important because I feel stressed because I think that, hey man, what I'm doing? Am I getting a new job or like learning? I mean, making more money. So if we limit ourselves to making money, then we get stressed. But if we relax, as, as David said, five o'clock, take a walk, you know, end of the day, that's it. The And all my fellow uh, engineers and budding students, uh, sorry, budding, budding uh, professionals, Managers. Managers, I will request you one thing. When you become a manager one day, treat your employees as if they are basically human beings. Yes. Because it is each one of us individually, as I said in my presentation, that we have this power distance that they are employees, they, they report to us. We can we can email them or WhatsApp them during during weekend after 5 p.m. in the evening. Every one of us should take a pledge when we when we leave our college that when we are in that managerial position, we will not text or email or ask for any work during, during the weekend or after 6 p.m. in the evening. This whole work culture, you know, like work never stops. And we, we pressurize everybody else. And they pressurize us, we pressurize others. This whole thing goes on. I think we as individuals, you know, need to stop this whole, whole cycle. Like staying late in the office. I used to work in India, you know. The actual work used to start at 7 p.m. The whole company will close at like officially at 5 p.m., but work will start at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. And people will go home at like 9 p.m. And then they will come back on Sunday to work to show the boss that I am working very hard. Then when you have kids, you have family, it's just, it, 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 it's just terrible, you know. And same thing happening at home. So I think every engineer who graduates from our university should not be allowed to graduate till he or she signs the pledge that when I become a manager, I will I will treat my employees humanely. Good. Thank you, sir. There are two Lovely. questions I can see uh, here. Social distance only in physical or mental aspect or group. Then there is one more question. How can one come out from negativity? And uh, there is Another question, how can we always have positive thoughts? Then can you focus on how in such stressful circumstances, especially post-COVID lockdown, entrepreneurship opportunities are emerging in India, especially in context of poor people? Uh, you Then these are the certain questions and we are running short of time. so. Any of you can deliberate upon these questions. I can comment uh, the question about positivity um, and trying to maintain a sense of hopefulness. We had a president of our university here who always used to say that when things are good, they're never as good as they seem. And when things are bad, they're never as bad as they seem. And I think that's very important in difficult times with crisis, if it's an economic crisis, if it's a health crisis, we always think things are going to be really bad and get worse. But we always have to remember that perhaps they're not as bad as our minds think they are because of the stresses, because of the fake news, because of a lot of the things that are um, put on us. But I think it's also important that when times are good, that we don't become too boastful, that we don't become too um, thinking that things are so good and that, that it cannot change, that we have to be cautious, we have to be respectful, and we have to think about the mindfulness of others as well when things are going well for us that perhaps they're not going well for someone else. So not to fall into the cycle of despair, that Gaurav showed the cycles of uh, economic productivity and he happened to get his degrees at the bottom of each of those and when things seem bad, they always turned around and became more positive. I think as human beings, and what Gaurav was saying, that you have to treat others as human beings, but it's important to always remember that things will turn around and get better. And if they seem bad now, they're not as bad as you might always be. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir.
making all the queries my esteemed panelist now over to bharti thank yes sir thank you so much uh, sir for focusing on such a relevant topic relevant at this particular stage of time uh, hey, uh, we have lots of uh, this crisis actually uh, we can say has po both positivity and negativity negativity in sense of health and mental mental health issues and physical health hazard but we we can say positivity in sense of that we are able to uh, connect friends we are they both connect with family members we have to, uh, to look behind what we have uh, actually left and we can regenerate again so it's now time for fall, formal uh, uh, of this session i would like to invite professor singh sir to thank you of his thank you note sir please thank you dr bharti am i audible yes yes sir so it's this journey also reached a shore ultimately we have come to the end of this talk and this session we i first of all would like to express my gratitude to our honorable vice chancellor sir professor srinivas singh sir who permitted us and motivated us to host this event and event hosting any event of such a great spectrum would never be possible without the partners active active involvement so my heartfelt thanks are to dr david m carey professor of university of wisconsin green bay and at the same time professor dr gaurav pansal our partnering university you have provided us a great support for which in this uh, because of which we can host such activity even being from the opposite of the planet we are able to stand together bonding from your end and evening from your hey hey mai abhi ho tum visible ho rahi ho and then after that i am thank me aur kya dr avijit ji probably he is holding the post of psychology with us so we are rich to have you dr avijit misra ji in this pandemic ridden time you are our repository of counseling and that we you did your job i am thankful to all my organizing team dr binay yadav dr bharti shukla ji dr ravi kumar gupta ji your support is always precious for us in terms of minimizing technological hitch and professor dr arjun dubey sir uh, a professor emeritus of our department whose motivation is always our strength and all my team of the department dr rajesh singh dr engineer vijay pushkar and kakasha uh, khan ji dr dr javed alam ji all all everyone you contributed dr priyanka rai and uh, everybody contributed their share and ultimately uh, my last but not the least my sincere thanks to you to all the participants who made this event added worth and jhaji dk jhaji because of you your entry was guest in but you made it so involving you involved all of us by raising certain valuable points addition <laughs> where a person is running away from quarantine center and police is telling that i will shoot him and at the same time at least by convincing him to come back to the center you saved one life hats off to you hats off to all those corona warriors working all across the globe such international platforms are also to salute 
those dedicated workers. Thank you all. Thanks a lot for being with us. Uh, now over to Bharti. And here, Thank you so much, sir. I would like uh, to take leave with the permission of all worthy partners outside the globe. So I think it's fairly morning and have a wonderful day. Have good morning to you all. And here, bidding good night to all Indians. Indian participants. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, one and all. We are winding up the session. Thank you, Ravi, sir, for your support. You supported a lot. And because of your technical support and your uh, good coordination, we are able to conduct this webinar smoothly. Thank you, Ravi.